Right, so number one, fading in and fading out. Super cool, super easy, can make things look really kind of cinematic quickly and easily. So here we are in DaVinci Resolve, we're on the Edit tab. I'm gonna drag this piece of drone footage, put it on my timeline. If I give it a click, I've got these little handles on the right and left sides. If I give that a click, drag it, we can just do a real simple fade from black like so. Now this also works with any audio, so music. So I can grab my music, bring this down onto this audio track number one. Same thing, give it a click, drag the little handle in, and now I've got this real nice fade in, makes for a real nice, simple little intro. Now I'm gonna just make my audio track a bit bigger because audio also has an additional handle, this one, right in the middle here. And I can drag this around to just change the curve of that fade in. So now the audio will start slow, 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 slow and then ramp up really quickly towards the end, giving us this. Now last but not least, this also works on text. So I'm gonna open up my effects library, come to titles, grab text, put that on top here. I'd give it a click, open up my inspector, do any changes I want to within here, change the text, all that sort of good stuff. And then if I give the text a click on the timeline, I've got the same handle, I can just fade this in. Now we've got this real nice, simple fade in that takes literally seconds to sort out, but actually makes for quite a nice, stylish, cinematic little intro. Number two, cinematic black bars. Now there's a bit of a caveat for these black bars. If you want to have that proper widescreen look throughout the entirety of your video, you're much better setting the timeline resolution to a widescreen aspect ratio. However, if you just want those black bars to appear and disappear throughout your clip, but you want to maintain a standard 16 by nine aspect ratio, this is a nice quick way of doing it. Still in the same place, I'm gonna open up the effects library. I'm gonna come down to effects, grab an adjustment clip, Put that on my timeline like so and then give it a click open up the inspector come down to cropping give cropping a click so that you can see all of these options here and then we're just going to crop the top and crop the bottom like so now generally you want these to be the same so i'm just going to change this to be 120 and i'm going to make the bottom one 120 and here we go nice black bars added via an adjustment clip. Now adjustment clips are cool because we can move them around, put them wherever we want on the timeline, and we'll straight away have those black bars at the top and the bottom. But what if you want to animate them? Well, that's easy to do as well. We've already added the adjustment clip. We've got the crop, as you can see here. All you want to do, move your playhead to about a second into the adjustment clip. So right here for me. And then we're going to tick this button here, which is to add a keyframe. All of these will go red. I'm then gonna move my playhead to the very beginning of this adjustment clip, double click on the top and the bottom to revert those back to zero. And now if we hit play, those bars will just animate in. Then we just need to do the reverse at the end. So it comes about a second before the end, add the keyframe, come to the very end, double click, double click, and they'll fade out like so. Easy peasy, black bars, done. Now, because it's an adjustment clip, you can name it and save it into a power bin so it's there ready for future use. I made a video on power bins up here somewhere. Give that a click, give that a watch. Number three, keyframing audio or ducking audio. So in this example, I've got my music with this sort of B-roll and then I start talking. So I need to just lower the volume of my music. And it's actually really easy once again. If we have a quick look at my music here on audio track number two, I don't know if you can see, but there's sort of a little line running through. It's really faint, but if you hover your mouse over it, the cursor changes to this up and down arrow. If we just click, we can drag this up and down like so to adjust our volume. Now what you can also do is holding the Alt key on your keyboard, click that line and you can add a keyframe. So just before the point where I start talking, I'm gonna add that keyframe. And then right at the point where I start talking, I'm gonna add another. And then after that second keyframe, we're gonna drag the line down to reduce the volume. And then if we hit play, the music will just come on down like so. And then if we want it to ramp back up, we just do the same thing, one click, Two clicks, release the Alt key, drag up, and the music will ramp back up again, like so, sorted. Number four, J and L cut. Now, if you don't know what they are, they're worth a quick Google because they're really handy. They're a really old technique that a lot of people use, but I'm just gonna show you really quickly how to do it. So I've got this example set up, we've got this B-roll, and then I start talking, but I want my voice to start coming in before it actually cuts to the clip of me. So there's a few ways that you can do it. The most important thing, what you need to do is hold the Alt key on your keyboard, and then you can either click on the audio 
for the video. So I'm going to click on my video edit point here. And because I'm holding the Alt key, only the video will be selected, not the audio. And then what I can do is just move this edit point forwards. So now what's going to happen is this clip will keep playing while my audio comes in. And then it will cut to me. Now alternatively, what you could do is just hold the Alt key, click on the audio, move the audio backwards, and you'll get essentially the same effect. Now what's also worth doing when you're doing these is to add an audio crossfade, which is my point number five. So we've got this here. If I open up the effects library, come to my audio transitions, we've got these crossfades. I can just drag this one onto my edit point and it will just do a crossfade. Now crossfades are great when you're going from one environment to another because you don't want that harsh stop of say ambient noise and then you talking, you can crossfade them together and it works much nicer. Now I actually do these so much that I've set them to be my standard transition. So let me show you what that means. In the crossfade area, if you right click on the crossfade, you can set it as a standard transition. Now let's say that I've got lots of cuts, I've been making a vlog and I want to add a crossfade to all of these different cuts. If I hold the Alt key, drag my mouse to select all of this audio here, and then just hit Control and T on my keyboard, it will apply my standard audio transition, which is the crossfade, to all of these edit points, and it will just make the whole vlog a little bit nicer. There won't be any harsh cuts to the audio. Number six, fast forward, slow motion, and speed ramping. Now, admittedly, this subject kind of needs its own video. I could happily make a 10 minute video just talking about this, but I'm gonna run through the basics so hopefully you get a rough idea of how it all works. So this footage was shot at 50 frames per second and I'm running at a 25 frames per second timeline, so I can slow this down to 50%. Now, there's a few ways that you can do this. I can right click on the footage on the timeline and then go to change clip speed. And then I've got this option. I would just change this to 50% click on change, and then this is gonna run at a nice smooth 50%. I'm just gonna undo that. Alternatively, give the footage a click, open the inspector, top right hand corner, on the video tab, scroll down until you get to the speed change area, give it a click to make sure you can see the options, and then in there you've got the same option, speed, I can change that to 200% to speed it up, or of course change it to 50% to run it at slow motion. Now what if you wanna do some speed ramps? Well, all you do is right click on the footage, go to Retime Curve. Now you'll get this option pop up, zoom in a little bit so you can see what you're doing. Click on this little drop down here on the left, untick Retime Curve and tick Retime Speed. So this line here represents your playback speed. So this is running at 50%, which is why everything's running in slow motion. I can drag this up to increase the speed or drag it down to slow it down further. Now, if you want to do a speed ramp, all you do, hold the Alt key and then click on the line to add a keyframe. So at this point here, I've got this little keyframe. After the keyframe, I'm just going to drag this line up and we'll run this at 200%. So before the keyframe, it's going to run at 50%. And then afterwards, it's going to run at 200. So we've got slow and then fast. Now that's just a straight line at the minute, so it doesn't ramp between the two. So to amend that, click on the keyframe You've got these two little options here. Click on this one on the left to add a curve, and then you can just use these little handles to change the curve so it goes from a nice slow-mo and then speeds up. We could add another keyframe here, bring this back down, smooth this out, and then it's gonna speed up and then slow back down again. Number seven, freeze frames and reverse. I'm gonna give this piece of footage a click on my timeline. Same place, inspector, video, speed change, and I've got direction. So by default, the arrow is pointing to the right, which means it's gonna play forward. If I want to reverse this clip, I can just click on the next little arrow pointing left, and this clip will play backwards instead. As you can see, everyone's walking backwards. And then to the right of that, I've got this little freeze frame icon, this little snowflake. So all I need to do is put my playhead where I want the freeze frame to happen. So let's just go with this moment here. And then I hit the little freeze frame, and this second clip, will be completely frozen in time like so. We can then just drag this out, make it shorter, do whatever we want with it. Let's go with about there. And that will stay freeze framed. Now, if at any point we want it to start playing again, all we need to do on the freeze frame, do a quick cut using Control and B, and then on this final section, give it a click, and then change that from the snowflake to the playing forward arrow, and it'll, it'll just continue like so. So then we've got the freeze frame in the middle, 
and the action will continue from there. Number eight, punch in, punch out, really quick, really easy, especially if you use an adjustment clip to do it. So I've got this footage on the timeline of me just talking to camera. I'm gonna open up my effects library. I'm gonna to go to effects, grab an adjustment clip, and put it on top like so. Click on the adjustment clip in the inspector, the video tab, scroll to the top, you've got this transform, and I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit. Now, because we're doing this on the adjustment clip, once again, wherever we drag this adjustment clip is where that zoom in will happen. So at the moment, look, I'm here, whereas if I put the adjustment clip, it's gonna zoom in. Now what's also really cool with this is you can actually stack them. So if I hold the Alt key, click and drag upwards, I can create a duplicate. And then if we just crop this a little bit, you can see we'll go zoom in, zoom in, and then zoom in again. So we can put as many of these and then we can just keep zooming in as much as we like. Number nine, colored backgrounds. Seems obvious, but it's actually a little bit hidden away. All you need to do, open up the effects library, come down to generators, and then you've got one here called solid color. Grab that, put that on your timeline, adjust the length of it, do everything you need to do, give it a click, open up the inspector, video, generator, and then you've got this little color box, give it a click, you get the color picker appear. I'm just gonna make this one white, click on okay, and there we go, job done. Now, of course, you can use this to create colored frames as well, which is my point number 10. This is a popular one that Peter McKinnon does all the time. So I've got my white background here. I'm going to grab this drone footage once again and put it on my timeline. And then we just need to shrink this down to reveal our solid color underneath. Now, there's a few ways to do that. In the inspector, you've got this zoom. You can just zoom out like so. Or a slightly easier way, underneath your preview window, you've got this little drop down. Give it a click. Click on transform. You get the transform controls on the preview so we can just drag this in making it smaller revealing our border underneath and then we've got this really nice looking drone footage with this white border on the outside looks really cool now if i just delete that drone footage this is also a really nice way of displaying any images that you've got especially portrait ones like so just looks really good now my trick number 11 following on from that same theme we're going to add a drop shadow just to make it look a little bit better so I've got this image, I've got my solid color. I'm gonna to go to the effects library, open effects, scroll all the way down until you get to this stylized area. And then there's a drop shadow. So I'm gonna drag that onto my photo on the timeline. And it's just gonna put this nice little drop shadow, which just gives it a little bit of depth, pulls it away from the background, looks really cool. Now this works for photos, but it also works for any videos as well. Now this is also a really nice way. Let me just drag my logo, we'll zoom out. We'll drop the drop shadow on there like so. Real quick way of just doing a logo introduction, something like that. Works really well, looks really cool, and it's dead quick and easy to do. Now, if you don't want a white background, but you still want to show some images, especially portrait ones, then there's another thing you can do, which is called blanking fill, which is my tip number 11. So I've got this image on my timeline. Currently, we've just got a black background, but we want to make this look a little bit nicer. So same place as we did before, the effects library, open effects, this time grab this one, which is just above the drop shadow, it's called blanking fill. Drop that onto your image and it's just gonna copy the image as the background. Give it a click, so it's highlighted in red. In the inspector, you've got the effects tab, blanking fill. If you don't see the options, just give the word blanking fill a click. And by default, it goes to stretch to timeline, which isn't my favorite. I much prefer zoom to timeline. And there you go, it looks a little bit nicer. There's also a bunch of options in here, so you can change the blends, you can change the blurriness of the background, have a mess around to make this look really quite nice. It's a cool little effect and it's easy to do. And then my final tip is adding some Gaussian blur. Sometimes you just want to blur your footage so that a title or a photo stands out on top of it. It looks a little bit nicer, so I'm gonna show you how to do that. So I've got this footage here, drone footage once again. I'm gonna to go to the effects library, titles, I'll grab a title, put it on there, but I'm finding the background just a little bit distracting, so we just want to blur it a little bit. I'm going to grab this text, move it up one track, so it's on track number three, and on this track number two, I'm going to grab an effect, adjustment clip once again, we'll put that on there like so, and then we're going to go to open effects, Gaussian blur, and drop that onto the adjustment clip. And that's going to blur the background, but because it's underneath the text, the text will still look nice and sharp. And then all we need to do is do our little fade as we did at the beginning. We'll move our text somewhere like that. So now we've got a sharp image, the blur kicks in, and then the title pops in as well. And again, adjustment clip, you can just put it wherever you want it, fade it, fade it in and out, and it's a real nice, quick, easy way 
of adding blur to your footage so that things on top stand out. And that's it. I hope you did enjoy this video. If you did, do let me know. Give me a thumbs up. Put any thoughts or comments down in the comment section below. And if you're new here, you did enjoy the video, maybe consider hitting that subscribe button for me. Thanks ever so much for watching, folks. Take it easy. I'll catch you next time. See ya.